who deserve win by seeing oh, yeah. it was in, an yeah. incredible final kilometer that he rode Absolutely. Alex Seagart, definitely a man to watch. On the up, already getting his first professional victory yesterday. The next, once again, the next line of Belgian lineage showing strong in those colours of ah. um, Lotto Destiny. That, well, just speaking of Lotto Destiny, they're now all together. You can see those sort of light blue helmets or teal helmets of the, the Lotto Destiny team and there's at least four of them together. So they're getting organized in the background. They've let the others do all the work so far, but they're ready to pounce. So what we need to do is look out for the number 65, if we get any more side-on shots, to see if Milan Menton is in there, because I don't know, if you spotted his number yet, Robbie? I don't think I have. I I'm haven't sure I have. yet, but there's so many of them completely covered up. Rain yep. jackets, and yeah, we're not getting that side-on shot of the peloton to to let us know if he's there or not. So not a lot of detail we're able to see, but can be forgiven in these weather conditions. Yeah, that is definitely Tim Dupont off to the left-hand side in that yellow jersey. Now he's there and ready and ready to get back in that top 10 again. I would not be surprised to see him in the top 10. He'll know how to operate in this kind of finish in these conditions too. He's right up on the back wheel of the last of the Uno X Mobility riders is Tim Dupont in that Tartaletto Isor X jersey. He's got a teammate in there too. And there's those two Yuskatel Yuskadi riders right the way down at the back. If it is Jon Aberasturi there, they need to get him in good position because actually in a reduced group like this, Aberasturi does have a good shout of getting on that podium at least. We've got one of the Flanders Valois riders. Lindsay de Vilde was in this group earlier. I'm just looking to see who it is. Well, there's Hestus, the four from Lotto Destiny on the right there, Jez. Yep. Red rain jacket, right hand side. Just got separated a little bit at, towards the back there. But you look how small this group is. I mean, you think, oh, I've got to be near the front. But if you're at the back of this group, it's not far to get there. There's just no. uh, a bit of good organisation. But you, know, you come into some of these pinch points, this is where you can sort of come unstuck, thinking, I'll yep. just wait, I can move up when I want. And then you get caught out where it gets technical again through these slow corners, a lot of braking, and you've, you've used a lot of power, a lot of energy to get yourself to even just back on terms and, and a chance to get up there. Robbie, in amongst all these uh, black rain jackets, we've missed the fact that there's three, if not four, of the Q36.5 riders. Here they come on their silver Scott bikes too. Four of them in there. This is pretty remarkable. They've hidden themselves well being in all black because we really haven't picked them out at all. I'm wondering, and I think one of them might be Rory Townsend, the Irishman. He's a slightly taller figure in there. I'm just looking to see whether Townsend is their last rider in this group. I'd have him down probably mm. as their best finisher today. Is he? No. I don't know if he is, actually. I'm not sure if that is his form. D no, it doesn't look to be that tall figure. So a no, little no. bit of a mystery at the moment with just over two kilometres still to go. So the lead-out transfer, they're, they're down in numbers. It is still a very long way to go. Even if you start with four riders outside 2K to go, I don't think that's a distance that anybody can maintain control at the front. It's going to be that late jump over the top, and I think Lotto Destiny are poised and just waiting to choose that moment. Robbie, I still think there might be an opportunity here, maybe even between one of these teams taking over, for someone to try a flyer down one side of this road. It's, it's highly unlikely to succeed, but I just wonder, in amongst the riders who are in there, whether someone fancies a little go. They have to go big, but... Wow. Timothy Dupont's teammate there, the Tartaleso Isarex rider. I can't see who that is, but he's coming up to join Dupont at the front, maybe to see if he can add a little bit to it. Emilian Chernier, I think, is the rider in the yellow rain jacket in the middle for Total Energies. He's moved up well to be very close to the back wheel of Luca Mozzato. Look out for the red jersey of Arkea B&B. That is definitely Mozzato. Just just barging shoulders a little bit with Tim Dupont off to his right-hand side in the yellow and orange of Tartaletto Isarex. Now Uno X are coming back up. After all the work they did, Robbie, they're almost entirely spread out, but I think, presuming it's Blickra, there is one rider being kept close to the front with the yellow band of Uno X Mobility. 
Yep, they've got two there in a row. They are using the riders from Q36.5 as they come towards the final kilometre. So they're surfing their way back towards the front. Still no sign yet of Lotto hitting it. Big corner here. Hold your breath. Oy, oy, oy. Hold it together. Oh, my gosh. They've done well to get through there. We are into Rosalara. It's not long. There we go. It's about to say they're about to meet the canal. Now they've met the canal, and they track the canal all the way to the finish line. We can hear the announcer on the finish there at two. Uh, one of the Arcade B&B riders, I think it is, is on the front trying to lead out. Um, oh gosh, this is messy. Uno X also trying to keep things together. They've got three riders back together too. Still those black jerseys of Q36.5 in the middle. This is such a reduced group. Much, much smaller than we had last year coming towards the finish too. But it's Uno X who've got this race back under control. And I think Blikra might be the third of their riders there, Robbie. If he is, he's now in prime position. But they're swarming either side oh, of the one Uno X riders. Ah, oh, dearie me. Uh, Luca Mozzato is already open. I think Luca Mozzato is off the left-hand side and has just decided to start his sprint anyway down the left-hand side. He's left it. Van der Too late, though. Van der Paar in the middle. Yes, I think you're right, Robbie. Van der Paar now opening up. And uh, is this Van der Paar down the middle? There's definitely one of the lotto riders is going to take the win. Wow. Well, they were denied the win one year ago by a fast sprinting Gerben Thiessen and a lot of chin-stroking about the photo finish. Uh, but one of the Lotto Destiny riders has just taken it. I wonder if that is Van der Paar. You'll have to forgive us, folks, while we just get our heads around what's just happened. We couldn't see a great deal. I think it is just a very tall figure that uh, really looked in. And I think Timothy Dupont was the man who yes. followed him across the line yes. in second. Yep. You're absolutely right. Tim Dupont was right up there, too. Do you reckon he's excited, Jez? Just a little. Just, I'll tell you what, after a very, very hard day out as well, they've made it, they've made good. And actually, they had more riders in that leading group than I realised. Jan van der Paar, winner of this year's Jean Grand, Prix, uh, Grand Prix Jean Pierre Montserrat. This is the second group sprinting in now. To one or two people still distance from that leading group. Uh, but in the end, around about 20 riders contesting the finish in a miserable day out in West Flanders. And young Janne van der Paar, 23 years of age, the Belgian, on the Lotto Destiny team, taking a very fine win. Maybe, maybe that's a bit of retribution for uh, Caleb Ewan coming second last year when he was riding, of course, for Lotto Destiny, Robbie.